welcome to season 7 episode 35 of the Ubuntu podcast. It's Wednesday the 26th of November and we're going to discuss what's been happening in the news and what's been happening in the Ubuntu community. If you're listening live you can send us messages using the chat thing on the website and in the hash UPCIRC channel. I'm Laura. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Super Northern tonight. Yeah, you did suddenly go a bit Northern there. <laughs> I heard. And joining me this week are Alan. Hello. Who's not from I'm up not, there. I'm not from the North. <laughs> Mark. Hello. And Tony, who's back with us. Good evening. Again. Oh, I remember you. You're sounding... Uh, you weren't here last you time, right? <laughs> <laughs> You're sounding lovely and, and clear-voiced this week, Laura. Yeah, and you. Yeah, yeah. the engineer's back. Yeah, <laughs> That's no. why. Well, we'll try and keep our eye on things. Mm. <laughs> I can't remember how to do it either. It's been so long. Um, but yeah, everybody's in good form, are they? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Reasonably awake. But, but not really. Yes. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we'll make it through. Shall we get on with the show then? Yeah. <laughs> Now it's time for the news, and the first news story um, for fans of browser and search engine combinations <laughs> um, is the shocking news that Mozilla Firefox have announced that Google will no longer be the search default search engine in the browser. Well, in some regions. In some regions, it doesn't say here. <laughs> well, uh, it, it, uh, it turns out they've uh, done some negotiation with uh, search providers and... Uh, They've got different search providers in different areas. And I think America is the one where they're switching away from Google to, to Yahoo. Yeah, the news comes after a deal which saw Google provide Mozilla with the vast majority of its income for the last 10 years um, has expired. So the previous existing contract is over. Um, users in the US will now have Yahoo! Exclamation mark, uh, which is powered by Bing, confusingly, um, as the default search engine as part of a five-year deal. Is that a good thing? Since when did Bing power Yahoo? Since yes. Google stopped powering Yahoo. Yeah, but d- Yahoo. when did Yahoo stop powering Yahoo? I don't, think, I don't think Yahoo Search was ever just Yahoo Search. It was always something else. But it was the first it was, one. Well, it wasn't no, it, the well, first no, it was, one, it was, but it was before Google. It was a directory. And then when they, they got Yahoo oh, Search powered yeah. by Google. Really? Yeah. I remember this yeah. when we talked about switching away from Google being the default in Ubuntu yes. to yeah. uh, Yahoo. There was a big brouhaha <laughs> then. Oh, because it was Microsoft. Well, not really because, because it was Microsoft. I mean, there were some people who said you shouldn't use Bing or you shouldn't use anything powered by Bing because it's Microsoft. And we basically ignored those people. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> Google is as evil now. <laughs> well, exactly. Um, but also it's a weird stance to take. The... Yeah. the um, I think the main reason we switched switched away, uh, we decided not to do it was, I don't know, it was either financial or, or user experience and we couldn't get the user experience to be right or something like mm. that. I don't, I don't remember. But it looks like they're going to customise the start page for the start page experience, like tweak what it looks like. So I think that's to counteract the why are you using Yahoo? It looks rubbish um, <laughs> argument. There is that argument. I don't know how they're going to counter the why using Yahoo, the results are rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> Redirect to uh, Google. Um, the question then is, was it Google, Google's decision or Mozilla's decision to uh, end the contract or not to renew it or extend it again? Mm. Um, we don't know, do we? No, there's... Um, Let's speculate right. endlessly. <laughs> yes, that's uh, private discussions, I guess. I was going to say, why don't they go to DuckDuckGo, but... DuckDuckGo duck, probably duck, can't duck, give duck. them... <laughs> But I guess but they, they don't get any ven- revenue exactly, from that. Exactly, yeah, they probably don't have much uh, money. No, I think you can get revenue search. I'm pretty yeah. sure you can. There are other others who do that. From Duck Duck Girl. From Duck Duck Girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, I but anyway. I can't say that. But, you know, the thing to remember is this is just the default and you can change it. Yep. Oh, the yeah. Flip side of which is most people don't. Yeah. <laughs> You know, people mm. people don't change defaults on there. Yeah, I wonder if they're more likely to change a default Yahoo than a if default terrible. Google. <laughs> right, yeah. Because <yeah. laughs> everybody's like, yeah, it's Google. Yeah. Well, well I mean, it, might, the, it might encourage people to try some of the other options like DuckDuckGo. Well, these people have already <laughs> made a choice to use Firefox instead of whatever browser That's came true. with their system, which probably wasn't Firefox unless they're using Ubuntu. Yeah. It, has to, it has to be a diminishing... Uh, tail though, doesn't it? Eventually, of people mm-hmm. who are prepared to go that next step, and then the next step, and then the next step. Well, maybe. Well, yeah. yeah. People will we'll be we'll using see. Ubuntu next. Yeah, outrageous. <laughs> okay, the next news story is uh, source code from the proprietary PowerVR GPU driver has been leaked online, and these are 
chips that are used in many mobile devices. You, you oh. might not know about it because they never write it on the box. It's not something you tend to like, advertise the fact that you've got a power, power VR GPU. Mm. Is that because no. they're rubbish or just because they're not interesting? Um, well, you know, it's not, it, yeah, mainly, mainly it's not interesting. It's not a brand that people know about, right? but it's a chip that a lot of people use in, in devices. Okay. Um, so, and, and it's sometimes used in um, tablets and, and in some uh, computers. In fact, they had a reputation a while ago uh, for being uh, terrible at, at releasing driver updates because it's closed source mm-hmm. um, and they wouldn't update their driver for the newer versions of X. So people would be running old versions of Ubuntu on a laptop that had a Power VR based GPU and couldn't update anymore because the version of X in the newer versions of Ubuntu wouldn't work with the older video driver. So you're left on an old unsupported version of Ubuntu or switch to something else or throw the machine away. <laughs> So what sort of devices have these chips? Tablets? Android tablets? Yeah, Android tablets and... Uh, iPads? Yeah, uh, I think some Apple devices have PowerVR-based GPUs as well, yeah. Mm. Okay. And so, so they, they currently require a proprietary driver? Yes, wow. which on Android devices shipped you know, with all that proprietary stuff anyway yes. is not a problem for most people. In fact, most ARM devices have proprietary GPU blobs. But the, uh, there was an interesting blog post that I read you know, by um, a guy called Luke Verhagen um, about, commenting about um, how you should not look at this source code in any way because it taints your ability to work on those kind of drivers in the future. Mm. Yeah. Um, and it makes the prospect of having a fully open source power VR driver harder because then it's always going to have to be reviewed to make sure that there's no leakage from the proprietary one. So are there people working on an open source power VR driver? I don't know, actually. There may well be. But his recommendation was just use something else. <laughs> don't, don't <laughs> Is this the that. sort of thing that people who are looking to put Ubuntu on tablets or phones would have to do if if it's such a popular graphics chip? Well, no, because uh, no, because uh, if, if you're using Ubuntu for phones and tablets, then we use the Android driver. So we just oh, use the driver that we use the driver that's already there, and that's oh. a binary blob. But oh. that's the same on any Android tablet. They all they pretty much all use binary blobs. Right. Okay. So there you go. Interesting. Mm. Up next, the International Space Station now has a functioning three D printer. This is awesome. It is. Yeah. Yeah. So they've been doing uh, some test prints to ensure that everything functions at zero gravity. Yes, because doesn't is, it? sort of drip well, no, well, it, it, it extrudes but it sort of blobs it onto a surface so if it sticks to the surface then i suppose it and then it sets quickly enough i guess that stops it floating away or I guess it, is it on if there's the no pressure to come out of the tube this is Some this pressure. is what, who who did a uh, physics degree in this room yeah me <laughs> how's it worked <laughs> How does 3D printing in zero gravity yeah. work? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sure this was your area of specialism. Did you, did you yeah. look at this 15 years ago? <laughs> yeah, well, there, was that t- there was that time in my third year where they sent me to outer space <laughs> with a 3D, printer, a 3D printer that, that yes. hadn't been invented yet. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, we didn't cover that really oh, in the course. Okay. Maybe that was the lecture shame. I slept in. And but the fact that they're actually sent one up there and they're trying it out and they successfully yeah. printed something. Yes, yeah, so they've, they've made... Cool. They've made Suggest it works. <laughs> yeah, they've made a, a replacement faceplate for the extruder as a first thing, but it's, you know, they've managed to manufacture something in space, not mm. on planet Earth. Can they print another International Space Station? <laughs> <laughs> well, Printing solar panels would be good. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, think yeah. about it. This yeah. would this would actually be, you know, the, if, if you think about taking this forward, you could have, rather than having to build things on Earth and then ship them, uh, like, yeah, put them on a rocket and ship them into space, you could just have the raw materials going up what so you'd have like a roll of the of the uh 3d printing material the P- PLA. no 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 pla or abs just a long string of it going, <laughs> going up going up into up. space yeah from so here yeah. down you, have, you have a sky tether and you just feed it up uh, to the space <sighs> you might need to pull it every so often to unlock yeah but no no it, but like yeah. in all seriousness you could have you could up. have yeah. a space station building its own modules on the space station. You could start mm. at one end and make a melt the shell of an unused bit of space station into goo that they could then use to <laughs> yes. make new parts. Yes. Well, we saw that at um, Odd Camp in Farnham. They we were did. talking about um, breaking, like making a pair of kids' shoes, like plastic shoes, like Crocs, uh, on a 3D printer. And then when you're, when you're, one of the problems with having children is they grow. Yeah. And you, so you like, take, the old take the old shoe, destroy them, <laughs> break them down, and then add a little bit more plastic in and make a bigger shoe. So we could just keep making bigger and bigger space stations <laughs> just by throwing a little bit more PLA at it. I love this idea. And you can make the plastic out of all sorts of organic material, like can't planets. you? So, yeah. So if you find a nice <laughs> Mine, planet yeah. with bits of moss Mine or an something. asteroid. Yeah. Mine an asteroid. Yeah. Who are you, Bruce Willis? <laughs> 
Well, we is... know we can land on that sort of thing now. Yeah, and then die shortly <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> they landed a short living robot. Maybe if, on they, maybe if they landed That's a 3D printer, printer which could have printed a bigger solar panel. <laughs> that yeah. would have done it. <laughs> or print legs. Why didn't they think of that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God, I don't know. Yeah, because they launched it 10 years ago. That's why. <laughs> oh, yeah, we just established that yeah, they didn't have doing. 3D printers then. Yeah. Yeah. Moving on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so, Canonical and the phone manufacturer Meizu have signed a strategic agreement in quotation marks. Mm. Is That's it not all... strategic or is it not an agreement? <laughs> 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 Well, no, it's, it's neither called, of the it's individual called, words yeah. are in quotes. The whole thing is in quotes. <laughs> it's called a strategic that... agreement. What that means remains to be seen at this point. Yes. Oh, okay. It was posted on Facebook earlier by Meizu. So, yeah, there's been loads of rumours on, on various blogging sites about whether Meizu were going to make a phone, an Ubuntu yeah, yeah. phone. Well, I thought, I thought that, that it had been announced they were. Yeah, we, we've said it like months ago that BQ and Meizu yeah. were yeah. going to be the, mm. the like launch partners. But it seems that there's been a lot of rumours of misinformation going around. So uh, they put a nice one-line vague status update on <laughs> yes. Facebook to clarify it for everyone. Yeah, a Is picture this... of Jane Silber and some guy. Uh, Christian Perino is the guy on the left. Right. Uh, Jane Silber is the person in the middle. Yes. And the guy guy on the right i guess is the guy from meizu i don't know <laughs> you'd hope yes. so if it was an agreement yeah i, lo- I love <laughs> that so people from canonical they lo- found a picture of <laughs> well there's a nice picture of someone signing a document which i thought was quite nice as long as it's not john o'bacon <laughs> well. <laughs> so Surprise. um the question they asked on the facebook page post was uh what did you expect from the cooperation <laughs> Well, that's a great a phone. Yeah. A phone, please. Yeah. Phone, lots of phones. Many, many, many phones. Mm, interesting way to make a tech announcement via a vague Facebook. <laughs> it's well, quite funny, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> They've got some discussion out of it. Does it say Mizu feeling happy? <laughs> <laughs> mm. Making a phone today. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's an Indiegogo campaign. <laughs> News of the week. Indiegogo campaign exists. Um, Jolla, the creators of Sailfish OS Yola. and the Jolla phone. What are we saying? Yolla. Oh, yeah, you say Jolla, I say Yolla. Okay. Um, have <laughs> started, they, anyway, whoever they are, they started the whole thing off. a crowdfunding campaign for a tablet. Mm. They're using Indiegogo to ask for $380,000 to manufacture the Intel based device. The goal was reached within hours, with the current total being $1.2 million US dollars. Um, which is more than three times the original target. Cool. Impressive. Why, Why what? Why did people pay 1.2 million? Yeah. Because uh, they want the tablet and they will Why? only make it if. Uh well, it's a, you, it's, you being a, a petulant child. Yeah, why? But why, buddy? But why? <laughs> so what, 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 there's a lot of tablets in the world. Well, why this, this is one? a new and different one made in, by Yola. You're right. So it has a different, A, they, it's designed differently, so it looks very different. It looks very nice. It's, it, similar to the way the Yola phone looks and feels very nice okay. in the hand. Um, so there's the design side, but there's also, it's their own software. So it's not an Android tablet. It's running Ooh. Sailfish OS. Yes, same as their Yola phone. Yeah. So it runs selfish apps, um, but they also have some um, third-party um, library that lets you run Android apps on it. So it can yeah. run Android apps. So if they're selfish apps, do they not share information between them? Um, I don't know. But they're selfish. Uh, that seeing? was a pun. <laughs> oh, was it? <laughs> selfish. Oh, I see. <laughs> it's that northern accent getting me every time today. <laughs> I just got to look it up and duck, 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 duck. They use QML as well, don't they? For... They do use QML, Ooh. yes. Could they run Ubuntu apps some, then? You could probably fairly easily port apps either way mm. from mm. in either direction. Yes. Cool. Interesting. Excellent. But it ends in, I think uh, it's got a couple of weeks left. Wow. But, I mean, they've long surpassed their goal. Um, yeah. And the tablets are due to be delivered in May 2015. <laughs> That's Ooh. not long. And we've just got time for some gaming news from Tony. No, unfortunately, we're just out. We, we, had, to, we had to leave a gaming news. Did we, did we leave oh. a gaming news last week? I can't remember. Oh, Mark is crackling. You see, this is... This oh, is no. uh, unfortunately, we have to deal with this rather than trying to sort out the, uh, the gaming news. No, we've still got plenty of time. Oh, oh okay. Well, um, I, just a quick, quick update for you, um, just to let you know uh, that Steam for Linux now has more than 800 games available for Steam for Linux. Cool. That's so, quite a lot of games. Yes. For Linux on Steam. Yeah, that's just shy of one over five. 
of the Steam or catalog, fifth, as we say in English. Yeah, um, that's not what it says here. It actually says one over five. Um, yes, so a fifth of the Steam catalog is available on Linux, Pretty which is good. good. And yeah. This, wow. yeah. So who who made this Google spreadsheet, which we've got a link to? Um, some guy on Reddit. Cool. There, yeah. So there's a spreadsheet which is which tracks the the history of um, the number of games available for each platform, and there's quite a you know a graph which shows a sort of approaching. Um, what's the word that everybody says when they don't really mean it for an, an exponential? Increase? Yeah, approaching an exponential curve for the the uh, the rate at which they're in, at their growing. Mm. So that's quite cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Linux is, what, 809. Mac is 1,300. Windows is 4,000. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, that's quite a lot. That's not bad. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's a good piece of gaming news there. Yes, well done. From me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the Ubuntu podcast needs you. Yes, you. If you hear something that tickles, titillates, or taunts you... Tweet us at UUPC or email podcast at ubuntu-uk.org. You can also talk to us on the telephone, Skype, Facebook and Google+. Find links to all these places on our website, podcast.ubuntu-uk.org. We really would like to hear from you. So go on, do your duty, keep calm and compose an email. And now it's time for the community news. Now, the duh. former community manager, <laughs> that was a the, not a duh, the former community manager of Ubuntu, John O'Bacon, has um, I remember him. stuck his oar in, <laughs> I mean, I mean written, a, written a blog post um, about a governance in the Ubuntu community and uh, how he thinks it needs to be reformed. I'm glad I'm not the new community manager. <laughs> well, indeed. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. It's quite lengthy and uh, suggests where perhaps things are going wrong and... Um, opens the door for discussion on the community mailing list. Yes. So, yeah, I mean, he, he talked a, a bit about sort of um, the various, like the the current um, groups who make the decisions, the technical board, the community board, and the, uh, sorry, community council, and the sort of subgroups mm -hmm. under them, um, and how he thinks that they should sort of, you know, reform their charter, as it were, to make sure that they're the most effective things to be making the, the, the decisions and having the discussions of the Ubuntu community and being more proactive than reactive. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the responses, at least on the original blog post, were basically people saying, well, if Canonical want this, then they need to actually give the community more of a say. There seemed to be quite a lot of pushback against the, the, the angle Canonical have taken more recently when they say give the community more of a say, more of a say in what we well, in the, in the overall sort of, Direction. direction well basically the 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 feeling from quite a lot of the discussion seemed to be that um you know people want um ubuntu to be you know the best desktop and server os it can be um but what canonical wants to do is make a phone and we've not seen a phone yet so really what the community wants apparently so it says says the self-appointed spoke people for the whole community mm. you know as 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 these things always are is you know to be able to drive the the direction of what they think is important right it's interesting because i think uh john is mistaken slightly with the the what he thinks the the governance boards should be doing i think they are doing the right thing i think the tech board in what its job is to make technical decisions so you know can we have ffmpeg in the archive those kinds of technical decisions that need you know people who know a bit about licensing and know something about the technical details of how that thing is packaged that's what the technical board is for mm -hmm. they're not there to decide the future direction of ubuntu from a policy point of view no. and the community council are there to uh, make sure the community is running effectively and they delegate some of those responsibilities to other teams. It used to be that the community council did all everything, but they delegated some to the membership boards. So the membership boards deal with who is a member and who isn't. And they delegated some to the loco council, which is to to deal with the loco teams all around the world, right? Mm -hmm. But I do think there is a gap that falls between the middle where where Jono is right, that there does seem need to be some somewhere there, something that deals with leadership and mm. uh, inspiration and those kind of things rather than the 
technical details of what package is this and and the the details of who is a membership and dealing with confrontation and and conflict which is stuff gets escalated up to the cc a lot um so i think i think jono's on the right track and there does need to be more inspiration because i think people have kind of sat back and let stuff happen and i'm not convinced by the argument that canonical are pushing everything in our direction and everyone else is um not able to contribute mm-hmm. i don't think that's necessarily the case i think some of it is they don't want to contribute I think there's a significant number of people who've just taken a step back or switched off or decided they don't want to do this anymore. Do you think that's because they think that... They have no influence? That they have no influence, or is it separate Some of them may think that, yes. It may well be. (laughs) Do you think think they're right to think that? Uh, I don't know, because it's different in every case. You know, some people who, who dealt with, like, you know, the desktop or something might feel like they're... What they, their opinion is, doesn't matter because we've now switched to Unity and they were, you know, very uh, into yeah. GNOME or something like that. Or, you know, their background is in GNOME. So, you know, the, there could be different perspectives from different people. I don't think there is one, mm-hmm. you know, collective uh, opinion on whether Canonical are going in the right direction or not. Um, it's tricky. And I do think it needs a bit of discussion and we do need some leadership. But, um, yeah, that discussion is ongoing. <laughs> cool. And there were sort of various follow-up posts and bits of what you might might consider fallout from from the discussion. <laughs> uh, so John o did oh, really John o did himself uh, post a follow-up with with some sort of some issues which he thinks like particular points which he thinks should be discussed. Got any examples um, of those? Which yes, I'm sure I do. If you uh, g- would just be good enough to fill for a brief moment, it's a good way to get publicity, isn't it? Write a blog post and then write another blog post saying that you were wrong in the first blog post, <laughs> and here's well, why. Yeah, I, I'm not sure he says he's not he's wrong. No, <laughs> no. I'm sure uh, it's just a clarification, really. Yeah. <laughs> well, so yeah, he, he suggests a bunch of exactly. like five things. Yeah, rather than just saying you know I think something needs to be done, he then comes along. And says, and here's what those things might look like. And right. one or two of them are a little bit business speaky, buzzword bingo yeah. kind of yeah. kind of thing. But so that's fine. You can go like him on Facebook. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, so, yeah. The the things he suggests are create a governance mission or charter to actually say what the governance of Ubuntu should be trying to do. Mm-hmm. Um, Which I think is is right for the thing that sits in the middle of the CC and the TC, yeah. uh, the technical board. I I think the what the CC does and what the technical board does is already well defined. I think this fits in. So I'd agree with that one. Yeah. Um, create an impact constitution. What? Um, which he is... probably explains it in his book. He does. <laughs> <laughs> um, which yeah, basically I think it sounds like it's about what the well it sounds to me a bit like a mission statement hmm. yeah so yeah what 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 impact the ubuntu project is trying to have to who and he he does explain yeah. that in like um, chapter two i think yeah <laughs> uh, cross governance strategic meeting so this is about rather than the boards meeting internally and discussing their issues they all there's also like representatives who then meet across the project to discuss how the different parts can interact mm-hmm. um Four, uh, he suggests an annual in-person governance summit. So this is actually getting these people together in the same yeah, room to socialise. I agree with that. Yeah, because yeah, he actually specifically calls out how the one of the uh, tricky to, uh, online summits have lost some of the aspect. That yeah, they're... and I I think we should get together, but it, the big question is who pays for that? Yeah, and where? Well, is in it? fact, no, how many? One, one how many thing he does point comes, out: who doesn't? Yeah, one thing he does point out is that there's the um, Ubuntu Community Fund, which, as we've talked before, remains yeah, largely unspent. No, it doesn't. Doesn't it? It's, it's an old camp, doesn't it? <laughs> Wait, so, oh, camp, I mean, yeah. no, but we, last time we review the the applications, the community team review the applications that come in for that fund every week. Oh, okay. And there's always stuff on it. Okay, well, no, it's just that last time the last time the the sort of figure the was report. published, right? It was like there were the majority Quick, of it didn't let's seem spend to have it been spent. <laughs> 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 unless we're unless we're investing it in something good. Okay. These gold right. No, back. I agree. I completely agree that that some of that fund, some of that money yeah. could be used to, uh, but it's it's not enough to have like you know a hundred people Parties. in a room in, in no. one. Well, no, he does. He says in. like you know key people from that, and then if Canonical wanted to back it as well and get some sponsorship in, then right, then maybe yeah, you could get sense. more people involved. And the fifth one is he talks about optimizing the community brand around innovation. But... I don't think I read this one as much, but. Um, but yes, if you want to see them, that's on johnobacon.org. 
Mm, to read it as I'm, much. I'm, not, I'm not just going to read out his blog post. No, <laughs> I don't think that makes good radio. We'll link to it. In, <laughs> we'll link to it in the show notes. Awesome. So, in other community news, Randall announced his loco wouldn't be calling itself a loco anymore. He's what loco? Are they loco? No, they're not. Oh, they're clearly God. not. They're okay, so this not. is Van, the Vancouver loco. No, this is this is Ubuntu Vancouver. Yes, uh, who have decided to stop calling themselves the Vancouver loco <laughs> and are now calling themselves Ubuntu Vancouver. Yes, yeah. that sounds cooler. Um, it does actually, I think, yeah. but um, there have been uh, some reactions. Basically, their reason seems to be because uh, being an official loco is loads of bureaucracy and overhead. That's what they are saying. And the uh, meaning of the word loco in Spanish is somewhat offensive, apparently. Well, no, it's, it's, it <laughs> it's has little. negative connotations because it basically means crazy. Oh, oh right. Is that all? Yeah, well, no, but then if you say I'm for, if you say to someone whose first language is Spanish, hi, I'm from the local Ubuntu loco, they're going to think you're, well, they're, they're not going to know what to think. They, but So why not use the words that it actually means, where it's a, it's a contraction of two words, local, local community. community. That's all it is. Yeah, you see, that's what I was going to say, is that at least it means some loco, means something <laughs> in another language. It doesn't mean anything in English, but yeah, if you know what it means. Yeah. So yeah, it's all kicking off and uh, lots of discussion going on, which is good because it's been a bit quiet on the old uh, community discussion bun fight list recently. <laughs> <laughs> Do they have an Acapulco loco? <laughs> Let's hope so. And that's the end of the community news. Oh, thanks for the notice about that. <laughs> <laughs> And that's it for episode 35. We'll be back next week when we'll be interviewing Dr. Lucy Rogers about hacking dinosaurs and we'll be talking about feedback and if you've sent us any by then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you've got about 25 minutes to yep. send us any feedback that you might have lying around. Uh, been quite a couple of weeks. <laughs> Yeah, I'm surprised we haven't had more feedback about the audio. <laughs> the audio quality. Quality. Maybe I nobody think, listened. I think, I, yeah, I think I, I made it very clear it wasn't good quality. Yeah, like that. Anyway, <laughs> see you next time. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye.